Hey guys, what's up? Bisectatron here from One Hive Gazette, here with my next video. And uh, in this one I'm talking about the uh, radius of an earthquake spell versus that of a jump spell, and kind of which one extends longer, do they have the same uh, length, and when to use each one. Because uh, this can be confused a lot of the time, and I want to clear this up for people. Um, so talking about the spells themselves, uh, they do have the same radius, they are the same size. And obviously this video is longer than 30 seconds because there's a little bit more to the story than that. So I'm gonna go ahead and talk about that now. Although they have the same size, the earthquake spell is, it acts like it's bigger. It's used for longer uh, distances. So they both have a diameter of eight tiles, meaning they have a radius of four tiles. That basically looks like this. Um, from one wall here to the other wall here, that's their extent. So. If you're using earthquake spells, you can go over this distance where there's six blank tiles in between, which is equal to two cannons. Uh, you can earthquake from one red bomb to another. You can get from that spot to that spot, dropping an earthquake spell uh, right in between each of these cannons. So to drop it, you want to put it right in between each of these walls. It'll open up a eight tile uh, distance between two sets of walls. A jump spell, however, cannot do this under almost every circumstance. The jump spell does extend the same length. So if you drop it perfectly, it will extend from one wall to another. And typically, troops will recognize it at least on the front end. So if you drop it perfectly and it touches this wall, if it um, encompasses the wall, I guess I should say, like it, the wall is within the jump spell, then your troops will take the jump almost all the time, unless there's some kind of weird uh, something that's going on like in my live attack that you guys saw typically the troops will always take that jump but in this circumstance right here the troops are going to leave the jump spell to go off to the side so let's say you want to bring Valks from this bomb to this bomb and you drop a jump perfectly in the middle between these two buildings it extends from this wall to this wall the Valks will enter this compartment they'll have to go to the side here go to the side there they will leave the jump spell and when troops are not in the jump spell they don't, they don't understand that it extends far enough for them to take it. So a troop within the jump spell, after um, everything in the compartment's gone, has a good, good chance of taking the jump spell, which is why a jump from here to here will work okay for this compartment if you drop it perfectly. The troops can take that jump because they won't leave the jump spell at all. It's so narrow, they'll be in the jump spell the whole time, so they just, they'll just go straight through. But a troop that's not in the jump spell does not is less likely to take the jump, I guess is what I'm saying, than a troop that is in the jump spell. So you've seen my king before, or my the kings in the uh, Golem Avalanche attack that take the jump, even though it's not really extending far enough for them to take it, it's because they're already in the jump spell. So whenever you have a six tile, or an eight tile, I should say, six tiles between the walls, eight tiles total, whenever you have this distance to try to go th from one side of it to the other like this, as long as the compartment does not look like this, you're going to need quake spells. A jump spell would not work here. The odds are uh, very stacked against you. You're probably not going to be able to get from one side to the other with a jump spell when the compartment's this wide or even a little bit narrower. As long as the compartment's not like this, you're probably going to need that qu the quake spells. Uh, the jump spell will work for this compartment if you drop it perfectly, but still you might want to drop the quake spells just because the jump would have to be so perfect uh, to get this uh, to get from here to there. So that's one thing to keep in mind. They are the same radius, but the troops don't take the jump like they take the quake. When you're dropping the quakes, um, if they touch the wall, the wall's gone. That's it. And the troops can obviously go a place where there's not a wall. They can just run right past it. But if the jump touches the wall, as you've seen, if the troops are in it, they might not recognize it, and they're less likely to take it. So keep that in mind uh, when you're deciding to bring a jump or a quake. A uh, distance like this, you can use a jump if you drop it good. Um, it, it can be done in a compartment that's, you know, wider. If the compartment's like, let's say, like that and like that, and there's buildings, you know, on each side, that can work. Just make sure you drop it perfectly. You have a much better chance of the troops taking the jump. A quake is still safer, but um, the chances are a lot, lot higher that the jump will work. So this is a reasonable uh, jump to make. And obviously you want to drop it right where that wall is, right in between uh, both uh, rows of walls. 
So it's going to be on that third tile in or the fourth tile, if depends on where you start counting from, but right in between both those sets of walls, that'll get the job done. So obviously for the six tile jump, you're almost always going to need the quakes. But one question that people ask is, well, is there a time where you don't necessarily need the quakes for to make the travel from one uh, area to another, but you want to bring the quakes anyway because they're permanent and the jump runs out. And yeah, a lot of the time that's the case. Let's go ahead and take a look at an attack where that was the case from our most recent war against TH9 specialist going down to number 20, uh, taking a look at Rich's attack, and he's using quake spells. One thing to keep in mind is quake spells work they take up more troops or more spell space in almost every scenario but if you don't need your poisons then you're not wasting any spell space because the two poisons uh, that you don't bring makes up for the extra two space that the quake takes up so unless you need those poisons a quake spell t or four quakes take up the same amount as one jump if you don't need those poisons a lot of the time you do need the poisons uh, so if you want to have the quakes and the poisons uh, you're going to lose uh, one or two spell space, which is equivalent to one normal elixir spell. So just keep that in mind, because uh, right here he actually decides he doesn't need the poison spells, so he can still bring three normal elixir spells, just like he could with a jump. But also, it makes a lot of sense here to bring the quakes, because look how many compartments are being uh, accessed. If he drops a jump, the troops will maybe get to one or two compartments, then it will run out, and he needs this open to get to the queen. He needs he needs to make sure that uh, the troops are able to go to where that town hall is and where the uh, dark elixir storage is and that cannon. The troops need to be able to access that the entire time because his king has to get in there eventually and take out the queen. Now a few Valks do get kind of weird on him, uh, which happens you know when you have this big space for them to work with. But right here, the jump would have run out by now, would have ran out by now. But because the quakes were down, that little wall is gone on the corner, the king's able to walk in there, get the queen, that saves the attack. So if you look at your at the area you're trying to drop the jump or the quakes on, and you're deciding which spell to bring, if the troops are going to need that time, if, they, if they're going to be moving in and out of the compartments opened up by the spell for more than 40 seconds at Town Hall 9, you're going to need the quake spells because the jump runs out after 40 seconds, at which point your troops will be landlocked. So... Keep that in mind, that's pretty important uh, when deciding whether or not uh, you want to invest the extra space for the quakes. And also, like I said, if you don't need the poisons, the quakes don't take up any more space. So that's another thing to keep in mind. Hope you enjoyed the video though. Hope it makes sense. Go ahead and comment any questions below. I think I got everything pretty accurate, but if you disagree with something, you can go ahead and throw that below and uh, we'll see if we can work it out because trying to bring the most accurate information I can and uh, I think this will help you guys in your attacks, deciding which spell to bring. So yeah, I'll see you guys in my next video. Bye, Sectatron out.